Um, Borky Ole Miss appears to be very active in the transfer portal market. There are some big names that are out there that Ole Miss is absolutely in on, but decisions haven't necessarily been made yet. So I think where we've got to start with Ole Miss. Well, they got two this weekend, but we can put those aside because you're headed in the direction that I think is more important. Yeah, so the idea of re-recruiting your own roster is a little bit of a new concept, but that was where Ole Miss started in terms of building its roster for next year. And they did a pretty darn good job. You got Jackson Dart coming back at quarterback. They got a deal done with Quinshawn Judkins, right? Is that official? No. No? Okay, so that's not official yet. We'll see if that happens. It is, you would assume that they're going to figure out a way to get it done, but it hasn't happened yet. Caden Priestcorn, tight end, coming back for his final year of eligibility. Jordan Watkins, wide receiver, coming back for his final year of eligibility. Trey Harris, coming back for his final year of eligibility. That's three pretty important pieces to go along with Jackson Dart on the offensive side of the football. Yeah, so just those guys you mentioned. So Jackson Dart has 27 starts in his career, played in 31 games. So 27 starts with your quarterback, 2,400 yards and 22 touchdowns out of Harris, 1,800 yards and nine touchdowns out of Watkins, 2,600 yards just rushing and 31 touchdowns out of Judkins. And Prescorn is a fifth year who averaged 16 yards per completion uh, this season coming off of that training camp surgery. Uh, I mean, that, and that doesn't mention anybody else. That is just players from last year's team that are returning on this year's team. That doesn't include the possibility of Juice Wells, who they visited, uh, who visited this weekend, didn't leave committed, may take other visits, but still, that doesn't include him. That doesn't include Deion Smith, the, uh, the junior college transfer who wouldn't have been in junior college if not for some academic issues. But still, that includes nobody else. That is, in this era... That's very uncommon, frankly, to have that much experience returning on a team before you add any other player. And so when you talk about this team for the next eight months going into next season, there's no projecting really, right? It's not going to be, well, if this player takes a step forward or if this player acclimates to the offense or if the quarterback does this, you know about all this already. You know what Dart can do. You know what Harris can do. You know what Watkins can do. You know what Judkins can do in pre-scoring. You know all of this on this team in this system where coach and coordinator are also returning. The, the experience that they have is very unique, and it's huge. It, it's as big as any portal player they could possibly get, getting all of those guys returning. You also had J.J. Pegues last week who announced that he was coming back for another year. You just so, got Pettis like five minutes ago as well. Oh. Well, that's a pretty important piece on the offensive line. Need, they, they needed that one. Uh, there's, so, there's been talk about him sliding down to guard. Maybe that's a more natural position for him at the next level. But regardless, there's experienced multi-year starter returning to the offense. Yeah, I think the the bottom line right now is Ole Miss has got to they got to get better on the offensive line, and they got to add some pieces on the defensive side. But as you mentioned, they are very much active in trying to bring in Juice Wells. They are apparently in the game with Walter Nolan. According to twenty four seven, he's going to visit this weekend. Okay. Which, um, getting him on – so he, he went to Oregon this past weekend. And he left Oregon without committing and is hearing you out. So, shoot your shot. I mean, it, it's a, a plug-and-play, instant impact, feared guy on the defensive line. Go all in and see, and see if you can make it happen. I mean, him leaving Oregon without committing is a big deal. It's important that, that he's coming to hear you out. Um, have been involved with the defensive end from Florida with the uh, last name that is difficult to pronounce. 
Lane Kiffin was in Knoxville today talking with the defensive end from Tennessee who has entered the transfer portal as well. So they're they're working on a bunch of others, and we'll see where it goes. The high school recruiting piece is a different deal for Ole Miss. What's going on on that front? Nothing really. Um, there's most of the classes committed. Uh, there, there's a four-star running back that most people think is going to end up there. Uh, they had the A&M quarterback commit in town as well uh, the, this weekend. But other than that, not much. It feels like they're just kind of done there. Uh, we got this question on the text line, by the way. Oh, wait, Why wait, go- wait, hold on a second. They, didn't they add one piece from high school, the uh, the quarterback from Oak Grove? He was, I don't think the f- – the, oh, that's not a committed happened, thing. Yeah. That's just a. He was a, in, in visiting. Yeah, that's the A and M commit. Okay, um, gotcha. But we got this question: Why go after Wells when you have Harris? Because you need multiple weapons to have an effective offense, right? I mean, if how many receivers do you start? If they're using the tight end, they start three. Well, if if you've got Harris, why would you not want on the other side of the field an equally as impactful receiver? You know that make your jokes, but they're trying to make the playoff and compete for a championship next year. That's what they're trying to do here. And so just because you have Trey Harris doesn't mean you should be done trying to add wide receivers. If you want to compete for a championship, you've got to be elite everywhere. And so stopping just at Harris and Watkins would be really bad strategy for them, frankly. Yeah. Sports Talk Mississippi. 